going to show you how to make your own party banner for bunting if you want to make party printables for your personal or your commercial use. Um, so my name's Rachel, I'm from All About the House. You can find me on Etsy or I have my own online shop which is called www.allaboutthehouseprintables.com.au Okay, so let's get started. So you're in Photoshop, you need to go File, New and choose your page size. So it comes with some, Photoshop comes with some presets, US paper which is letter size or 8.5 by 11 inches which is what people in the US use or international paper is A4 size paper so if you live in Australia like I do we use international paper. If you're making your party banner for your own personal use obviously use the page size that's in your country um, that's used by your country. If you're going to be making party banners to sell commercially, for example in an Etsy shop to make party printables, then I recommend that you choose US page size because most of your customers will be located in the US. Party printables are really popular in the US, so choose US page size if you're going to sell them. You can also enter in the dimensions if you want to. In here you don't have to use letter size, you could use a custom page size if you want to, but if you choose a standard page size it will be easier to print. Make sure your resolution is 300 pixels per inch, RGB color with a white background, and then select OK. So now we've got our template, we need to add our banner. So if we come down here and create a new layer, then go over to the shape tool. Yours may be showing a rectangle or an ellipse. If you right click, you can choose polygon tool. So I want to make sure that three sides is selected because obviously a triangle has three sides, and choose your fill color. So I always go with black so I can see it easier against a white background. You can change the color later on, it doesn't matter what color you choose. So if you don't want black later on, don't stress, you can easily change it later. Don't worry about choosing stroke, which is a border around your shape. Uh, we're not going to use that. And make sure that shape is selected, so if you've got path or pixels, just change it to shape. So you can make your party band any size that you want. If you left click on your page, it'll come up with this um, menu here, so I'm going to do a 9 inch by 7 inch party banner. You could do a 5 by 3 inch or a 5 by 7, any size that you want. Keep the number of sides at 3, don't worry about ticking either of these boxes and select OK. So now I've got my banner but it's facing the wrong way and part of the banner is getting cut off. So I need to rotate this. So if you press Ctrl T, I can then come up to the angle tool and make it 90 and then press enter to apply the change. So I also need to align this to the center of my canvas because some of the triangle is still getting cut off. To do that, come up to the marquee tool which is this square with a dash border over here. Left click off the edge of your canvas and drag until you've got this dash border on all sides. Come over to the move tool and align it to the center of your canvas and to the middle. Then press Control D to deselect. So if you're going to make a few different types of party banners, I recommend that you change the layer name over here to the size that you've used. So this one was a 9 by 7 inch. That way it's easy to, rem um, you don't have to remember what size that you used, you've kept a record here. So if a customer looks at the banner and they say, oh, I don't want it to be as long, then you can easily reduce it because you'll know what size you've used because you've recorded it here. So if you're going to use these for your own personal use, you don't need to worry about adding any text, but if you're going to sell the banners in your shop, then I recommend adding the size of the banner to the page and also a copyright notice with your shop name. So to do that, just create a new layer, come over to the type tool. It's currently on white, so this is how you select your colors. The first color that's showing in this box here is the color that will be added to your canvas. You can also change the color up here if you left click. You can choose a color from the color picker or you can um, enter the color code in here if you know what it is. So I'm going to use black which is 0 for each of the RGB or 6 zeros for the hex code. Then select OK. Left click on your canvas. So I'm going to go 9 by 7 inches. So my text is obviously too big at the moment. So if I press Ctrl A I can reduce this, I'm going to make it 30, so 9 by 7 inch, oh, my keyboard's gone funny, um, and it is a printable party banner. My text is currently getting cut off, so like we did with the flag, we need to come over to the marquee tool, left click and drag. We just want to align it to the center of the page, we don't care about 
um, aligning it to the uh, middle of the page. So just make sure you've got your borders appearing on the left and the right side. Then come over to the Move tool and click this button here. So now your text is in the center. Then press Control D to get rid of that dash border. So I've got the name of the party banner. I now want to add my shop name. If I press Control J, I'll create a duplicate. Press Control T, so now you can move your text. Hold down Shift, left click and drag down. If you don't hold down Shift, then your text won't be perfectly vertically aligned with it above. So if you try and move it yourself, it might get a bit crooked. See how the um, arrow that's facing left or right with a line next to it, that's how much you're moving it to the um, at the moment to the right from where it was originally located up here. So you want to make sure that that shows zero and you can do that by holding down shift and then left clicking and dragging down. Then press enter when you're happy with where it sits. Come over to the type tool and click in that text that you've added. Press control A. We obviously don't want the same thing to appear at the top and the bottom of the page. We want a copyright notice. So create a bracket Press C for copyright and close your bracket and then put your shop name and then put your shop URL which might be www.yourshopname.com or you can put your blog URL, your Instagram, etc. Don't put too many things on the page that it gets cluttered. I usually just put my shop URLs where they can find me on Etsy or my online shop. I also like to add a note that says for your personal use only because obviously you don't want a customer to purchase this and then sell it and try and claim it as their own. Um, try and claim it when it's your design. So I always put for your personal use. It's not for commercial use if you're going to sell these. If you're creating this just to use for your own kids party, obviously you don't need to worry about adding this text. So it's currently off the edge of the page. I need to make it a bit smaller. If you press Control A, it will highlight all of your text and you can then reduce it a bit. So if we go to say 25 point, and I can use the arrows on my keyboard to just push it up so it's on the page. If you don't like how much of a gap there is between these two lines of text, just come over to the Type tool, left click and then press A to highlight all of your text again. Come over to the Characters menu. If you're not seeing that, make sure that Window and Character is ticked. And then you can change this here. So at the moment there's 35 points between each of my lines. If I drop that back to 25, that's a little close. 30, not 230, 30, looks pretty good. Alrighty, so I'm happy with that. I'm ready to actually create my banner now. So you can make a banner which is just a pattern. So for example, if you just wanted to put some polka dots on this, um, you'll need a digital paper or a digital paper overlay. I have a, another Etsy shop called Paper Cravings, all one word, no spaces between, just paper cravings together as one word. And I have lots of digital paper um, which you can purchase and use to create your party printables or I also have digital paper overlays which is the pattern with a transparent background so you can choose your own background color and also the own color that you want for your polka dots so you don't have to use colors that I've already chosen which is the case if you purchase digital paper. So if you choose to purchase some of them then you can just navigate to where you've saved them on your computer. You can download some for free um, I'm just going to use one that I've made earlier, which is called a Rainbow Stripe, which I have in one of my other um, sets, which is available in my shop. And then press Enter to bring in your digital paper. We now want to um, make it so it appears on our triangle. So to do that, click on the pattern layer, left click and drag down, right click. You want to make sure that the layer of your um, digital paper or your paper overlay, whatever you're using, it could just be a solid color if you want, or it could be a graphic if you want to use um, your child's photo and add that to the banner. Make sure it appears the layer directly above your banner. Right click and choose Create Clipping Mask. So part of my um, paper is getting cut off. It doesn't extend to the edge of the banner because I can see some black and I don't want that. I want to see the rainbow. So press Control T, hold down Shift, left click and drag outwards. I always use the corners not the center because obviously that will just extend the width which we don't want. We actually want it to make the banner bigger so go to one of your corners. It doesn't matter which corner you choose. Hold down shift, left click and drag out. If you hold down shift the pattern will maintain its proportions. It doesn't really matter if it's a stripe pattern but if you're using something like polka dots if you don't hold down shift your dots might become ovals because it will distort the pattern 
and you'll lose the proportions. So when you're happy with the size of your um, digital paper and how it looks on your uh, banner, if you want to, you can use the arrow keys to move it up and down if you want to see more of one color up the top, etc. So if I want blue up the top and pink down the bottom and then press enter. So, oh, I've still got a bit of black showing down the bottom. So if I just press control T again, I want to make sure that I don't see any black and I want it to be all blue and all pink down the bottom and then press enter. Cool, so now I'm happy with that, I can now add other elements to my banner. So if I create a new layer, I can add a circle. So circles are really good to work with banners because then you can put text inside them or you could also put clip, clip art. So for example, if you're doing a nautical party theme, you could put an anchor inside the circle and these sort of banners are really good to go on the left and right ends of your party banner. So if you have it spell happy birthday and then the anchor banners on the end, or you could have a just a blank colored banner. Um, you can use lots of different clip art and a good way to show that is to add a circle, especially if you're using a pattern background on your banner. So come over to the shape tool, right click and choose the ellipse tool. You can make your fill color any color that you want and remember that you can change this later using the same method of having the color or the pattern that you want directly above the circle layer and then right click create clipping mask. So I'm just going to create a circle, if I hold down shift, left click and drag, I can make it um, the size that I want it to. If you don't hold down shift, it will create an oval or a not evenly proportioned circle. When you're happy with the size of it, just let your mouse go and press enter. If you know the size that you want it to be, for example, you want a one inch circle, just left click and you'll be able to enter in the dimension. So if you want one inch, um, IN is inches. You can also enter it in, in centimeters if you want and then select OK and then you'll have a one inch circle. So I'm just going to delete that because I don't want that. I want the big size. So now I want to make sure that this is um, actually all on my banner. So if I come over to the move tool, left click and drag, I can reposition this onto my banner. So I'm going to put it about there. If you want to make sure that it's really perfectly aligned, click on your circle layer, click on your banner, and then click this button here, and it will be aligned to the center of your banner. So I want to add, I'm going to add text to the middle of my circle. So if I create a new layer, come over to the text tool, I want it to be white so I can see it against this black circle. So I'm just going to change it to white, which is 255, 255, 255 for each of the RGB. You want to enter that three times or six Fs and select OK. And then left click and type the letter. So if I want to spell out happy birthday, I'm obviously going to need a H. So if I just type H, obviously that's too small to see. So if you press Control A, it will highlight all of the text and you can then increase the size. So if I make that 200 and come over to the move tool, I can left click and drag to reposition it. That looks like a good size. If you're not happy with the size, just come back to the move tool and enter in the size that you want here. So when you're happy with that, we want to make sure that the letter is perfectly in the middle of this circle. So if we click on the H and click on the circle and then go to the move tool, click the center align and the align horizontally so it will be this in the center here and in the center in the middle. So it already is, so that's good. So at the moment my circle is black. If I wanted to, I could make this white and have a colored letter. So let's do that. So if I double left click in this little um, icon in the bottom right of my circle layer, I can change the color. So if I want to make my circle white, just enter in the color code for white and then come over to your letter and I might make my letter uh, purple to match the color of my banner. So click in your type layer, press control A, choose the color tool. It'll come up with this little color like eyedropper. If you click on your canvas, you can change the color. So if I want pink, purple, blue, it's a good idea to use a color that matches the color for your letter that matches the color you've used as your background, which will really make it look nice. And I have it matching. I do like when things match. So I'm going to go with pink and select OK. And then just come over to the move tool to deselect. So now I've got a H. If I wanted to, I could add an inner uh, border to my circle. So if you create a new layer, 
come back to the ellipse tool we now want to choose no fill because we want a hollow circle but we do want stroke so we're going to have a hollow circle with a colored uh, ring or a colored border so the stroke I'm going to use that same pink so if I do turn on stroke which is this solid fill here and then I'm going to click on the color picker tool and click on pink and select OK. Now you can have a solid border around your circle or a dashed or a dotted. I'm going to go with solid and just close that menu. Keep it at shape. And then if you hold down shift, left click and drag, you can create a circle. And then you can reposition that on your canvas by pressing Control T, left clicking and dragging down and then press enter. So that's not um, too easy to see the circle, it's a bit thin. So if I come back to the um, shape tool, I'm going to bump it up a bit to say 5 point. Yep, that looks pretty good. I want to um, expand it out and make it a bit bigger. So press Control T, hold down Shift, left click and drag to make your circle a bit bigger. Cool, so I'm happy with that. To make sure that it's um, got the same amount of white space between the like all edges, click on the ellipse layer which is the circle border layer you can rename these if you double left click if I go border of circle and then double left click and I'll go the circle click on your circle layer and your border and then click these move tools so it is already aligned perfectly so you've got a finished banner now you can save it so I recommend that you always save your template so your flag with your um, shop name and the title up here already saved if you want to make a whole bunch of banners and because you're probably going to want to have more than one banner for example if you want to spell out happy birthday so make sure that you save it as a PSD file which is a Photoshop file format so it will save this template so you can come back and reuse it an unlimited number of times to make heaps of different types of banners so go file save as Choose where you want to save it on your computer by clicking the arrow up here and name it whatever you want. So if I go party banner 9 by 7 inches, I always include the size of the banner in my file name because then it will be easier to find um, later on. And obviously if you're going to make lots of different types of banners in different sizes, um, you really need to name it the size of the banner. And make sure that Photoshop or PSD file is selected and then select save. I've currently already got a file named that, but I do want to replace it, so I'm just going to select OK. So now we have our template saved. We can now save our banner ready for printing. So you can save it as a JPEG or a PDF. The JPEG is an image file, and a PDF is obviously a PDF which can only be opened in Adobe Reader. Adobe Reader is a free program which you can download from Adobe or Adobe, however you say it. Um, their website, it's free. Um, it just means that you can open it on your computer but a JPEG is obviously an image. So for printing some printers prefer JPEG, some prefer a PDF. I personally prefer the PDF um, but it's up to you. Sometimes the JPEG will print better. It really depends on your type of printer. If you've got a higher spec model printer so it's not just a cheapy bottom of the range printer. They tend to use JPEG um, and print better as a JPEG than a PDF but um, it's totally up to you. If you're going to sell these commercially, I recommend including both JPEG and PDF file format for your customers so they can choose. And another thing, they may not have a printer, they may be taking it to a print shop, which could be Staples or an online print and ship website such as Best Value Copy. Um, so then it really depends on the printer's preferences, what file format. If you include both JPEG and PDF, then you give customers the option. So I always recommend including both. So to save it, just go File, Save As, and instead of choosing PSD, change it to a JPEG, not a JPEG 2000, just go a JPEG um, or a PDF, depending on whatever type of file format you want to use, and then you just go Save. I always choose 12 for image quality, which is the maximum. Yes, it's going to be a large file size, but your color will be nice and crisp. There won't be any blurred edges or anything fuzzy it'll be a good high quality file and I always just leave it at baseline standard then select OK if you want to save it as a PDF just go file save as change it from Photoshop to PDF and then select save 
make sure that you save your Photoshop template first before you save it as a PDF because once you save it as a PDF you can't convert it back to a Photoshop so if you've saved your party banner without the text label and you've then gone and added a text label um, make sure you save it first because as soon as you save it as a PDF you can't come back and change it PDF you should not you should be using a Photoshop file because that's a high quality file when you save it as a PDF it compresses the images down and if you keep resaving a PDF as another PDF file from Photoshop your image quality is not going to be very good so make sure you always keep your Photoshop PSD file saved before you save it as a PDF ready for printing or for sale then select save when you've selected PDF now when I save a PDF you can tick preserve editing capabilities if you're giving this or you're selling it to a customer I always untick that because you don't want them to be able to open it in Photoshop if they have it and modify it it's your design it's owned by you don't give them the chance to copy or modify and try and claim it as your own and then sell it so I always make sure that this is unticked I leave all this other stuff as is come to security and I always add a password to my files so if you tick this box here change the printing allowed to high resolution so high resolution will be a high quality low resolution is obviously low quality make sure you choose the highest resolution available changes allowed I always go none I don't want them to be able to add any more text or modify my design I want them to just be able to print it so I always choose none permissions password I always add a password so if I just go test press enter and then I'm going to ask you to confirm it press the same we'll type in the same password again and select enter and then it will save it as a PDF so you can then sell that to your customers and they can open that in Adobe Reader still saving cool so now it's finished saving so you would need to do that for each one so at the moment it's PDF just X that I always hit no come back to your template which is this PDF and then you would change the letter so if you click on the type tool click on the H press control A we we'll probably now want an A for happy if you want to spell out happy birthday you would go H A so now we've got A we need to go file save as and then you might want to change it to A or the type so if you're doing a nautical banner you might go party banner 9 by 7 inch nautical and it's A etc and then change it to a JPEG and a PDF and save it and then repeat it for each of the letters in your party banner um, so that's how you make one of those party banners if you wanted to you don't have to add a pattern you can just turn that pattern layer off and have a plain color if you double left click in the triangle shape here you can change the color if you want it to be red or you want it to be blue um, any type of color that you want if you just want a solid color again you can turn off the circle and the border if you just want the letter on the banner you could add clip art so if you go to where you've got clip art saved on your computer just left click and drag to bring it into Photoshop so if I go to let's make it, I think I have clip art saved yep I've got a ladybug which you can purchase from my shop paper cravings if you like the clip art so just left click on the file and drag to bring it into Photoshop and then press enter um, that's obviously a bit big for my banner so if I press control T I can hold down shift and left click to make it smaller and then enter to apply the change so I could have a banner with just a ladybug on it so they're again good for the end so if you had a nautical party banner you might have an anchor then spell out happy birthday another anchor on the end and then maybe some blank colored flags as well depending on how big you want your banner to be um, to turn layers on and off so for example if I just wanted to print it as a solid color or if I wanted to turn the ladybug layer back on you click on this box here so if you've got the eye showing that means you can see it if you click this box that means it's hidden so even though you've got layers in here what will print is what you'll see here so it won't print the rainbow stripe and it won't print the ladybug so don't worry if you've got a whole bunch of layers in here with your whole working file um, you won't see that when you print it's just what you see on your canvas um, so yeah you can use the letter with just a solid background you can add just a pattern with the oops it's now clipped to the ladybug I want to clip that to the banner you could just have the letter on a banner obviously that's not 
um, as easy to see as if you add a circle, you can add a border to your circle, um, you can play around with the colors. I could make this a blue circle with white text and a white uh, border here. So many different options that you can um, use to create party banners. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Again, you can find me at www.allaboutthehouseprintables.com.au or search All About the House on Etsy. Thanks for watching.